final guillotine ever. Ah! Good for you. I'm sorry. I'm jealous. Thank you. Push a pee. Push a pee. Push a pee. Welcome back to The Mark Through. This is episode 17 where we're talking all about the 2022 UCA College National Championship. It was an incredible event down in Orlando, Florida. We're so excited to dive in and talk about all the highs and the lows, the 135s and 7s. But before we do, we got to talk about our sponsor. If you haven't gotten your copy of ABC Cheer with me, make sure you get yours now on DangerousCheer.com. More exciting news in the book world coming in 2022. Thanks for watching episode 17. We're glad you're here with us. Like, subscribe, and comment. Music's on! You ready for this? Who live is this? Who lit is this? Who real is this? We too legit. We are M-A-R-K-T-A-R-U. Mark through podcast. Listen and learn. Watch and observe. Challenging this. They got some nerve. We great. You mad. Don't hate. Get to it. Don't wait. We do not hesitate. We do what it takes. What we do. Mark through. Episode 17 of the Mark Through. We are still in this. <laughs> I know. We're really, we're, you know what? It's fine. We're, we are, what do I say all the time? We're, we're documenting history. And that's like really the biggest. Yeah. I just need to go back and watch these videos to know what happened in cheerleading worlds. You or know? Just what happened in our 30s. Or what happened in our 30s. Yeah, when we're old and in the nursing home. Well, I already can't remember when we posted our last thing. So like memory is slipping. This is clearly just documentation. Yeah, a little bit. But also like cheerleading compared to other sports is very young. It's yeah. very small. Yes. So even though we like joke, oh, cheerleading doesn't have an off season. Mm -hmm. Cheerleading very much has an off season when it comes to talking intensely about competitive cheerleading you can't do that year round no there's no. not enough events mm -hmm. there's not enough competitive discourse mm -hmm. to talk about it the sport's just not to that evolved point yet so um as much as i would love for this to be like a weekly podcast there's just not that much cheerleading not right? yet yeah like we're we're not there so welcome back cheerleading also this was like a really crazy like Holy cow, cheerleading overload weekend because we had cheer on Netflix, drop season two, college nationals is back. And then I know just between the two of those things, you and I are feeling like, holy cow, we go to we go to NHSCC in mm. three and a half weeks. So after having two years off, this feels like a lot. Yes. To, like a yes. lot. Yeah. So yeah, we're back, baby. <laughs> we're back. Bing bong. <laughs> This, uh, this, there was a lot that happened at this past weekend's, um, college nationals. I mean, like you were just saying two years off for the normalcy of the sport and the season. I mean, yeah, last April we had college nationals, but it was really kind of like half or three half quarters. Virtual, half in person. Because some teams just weren't competing. Mm -hmm. So it was, I was really looking forward to this weekend to seeing like, how's everybody doing after you know, mm. some two years off, some nine months off, like some a month off, some a month off. So it was really, I just know when we were in the thick of the pandemic in the 2020 kind of bleeding into 2021 now into 2022, where's everybody at? How is hitting happening uh, for college purposes? Like who stayed and used their eligibility that they were like regifted? Mm hmm. Um, and that type of a thing, yeah, being on gone. stage again, being in front of a crowd again. I mean, even those that went and competed in person, they didn't get a crowd last year. Mm -hmm. So it'll be, uh, I just know leading into this weekend, I was like, okay, what is, what is this going to look like? It wasn't terrible. Like mm -hmm. I really thought it was going to be kind of disaster after disaster. Yeah. Um, and a lot more teams went. Yeah. I felt like there were a years lot more passed. teams. Yeah. And more on the game day side, more yes. on the traditional side. It's almost like it being taken away. More colleges and universities were like, you know what? It's our time. We're going to mm -hmm. get our, we're going to get our ducks in I mean, a row. Think how many teams, talk to admin. like when coaches change or a new coach comes on just, like newer or up and coming programs they're like okay we're not going this year we're going next year like think how many people said that at the start of 2020 yeah. or said like 2021 will be the year we go totally and then like nope that decision wasn't up to you so totally. it's like okay 2022 registrations open yeah everybody signed up i think that 
we're seeing that, especially with the high school side. Yeah. Because that event is so packed registration wise. Like everything we're getting from UCA is just like, it's full. Uh, get it get it done now like registrations filling up and i mean what we've heard for division quantity so i think we have a big weekend ahead of us yeah um this weekend's event i'm sure was crazy for everyone that attended uh, maybe someday we'll be granted clearance clearance and we can do the the mark through live from hp field house wouldn't that be wonderful that'd be that'd be the dream maybe someday fun. maybe someday you know the only <laughs> like the only like you know, sometimes at dinner, we like to say, what was your high? What was your low of the day? We got that from Sandy and Layton. Mm. That was something, that's something they do with um, their daughter at the dinner table. So sometimes yep. we do that. Well, when I think about the weekend, I think my, one of my lows, and maybe this can work for both of us, but Wichita State didn't compete for the first time in a long time. Mm-hmm. And that was like really hard for me. Mm-hmm. And then KU mm-hmm. didn't compete UCA, but we have been told that they're going to compete in mm-hmm. CA, which yeah. is great. I love mm-hmm. a transition year, like a, a transfer year. That's exciting. Yeah. So um, we'll see what happens there. But I felt like you and I all weekend, like I wanted to go put like, on like my shocker mm-hmm. and cheer shirt. I wanted to cheer on mm-hmm. my, like wanted yeah. to be a proud alumni. So um, as those old people, I think, um, um, our like competitive hearts were a little like, huh. a little I, but we're rooting for all our friends, mm-hmm. right? We like, so it, it's it was a great weekend. It was that was my that was my low for the weekend. I had to share. Okay, what was your high? If you're sharing your low, oh god, my high, my high for what the are you weekend. A pessimist? No, it's just like that was just my <laughs> low. I was just really sad to not watch like my alma mater at UCA Nationals because that is like just such a. Tr- part of the tradition of us always having like a big watch party at our house and mm. and watching all the teams compete and stuff. So, I mean, my high of the weekend was just cheerleading being back. Yeah. Like just getting friends together, watching at our house at the watch party that we have like always had and mm. supporting our friends. Yeah, we treat college nationals, UCA college nationals kind of like the Super Bowl. Yes, we do. I made a copious amount of food. It was delicious. And we just piled on the couch and we watched our picks and um, and then last minute during finals D one A finals you were like hey do you want to live tweet this and I was like oh god I can't enjoy this at all like I instantly got like PTSD <laughs> you fun. did great I know but I wanted to like sit and enjoy D one A finals I gotta put you to work sometimes I know I know I know so uh, if you guys enjoyed the live tweeting it, or you absolutely hated it um, then it wasn't Lauren it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so getting into our traditions of the mark through our 1357 of the 2022 UCA College Nationals. Okay, one. so one of our 1357 UWG University of West Georgia back to back all girl national champions. Yes. Ma'am. So very exciting for them. Shout out to our little county cheerleader that's on the team. Very proud of those guys. They've but part of me is like Good. They they should have been ready. They've competed three times in like the past nine months. And they've I mean, literally they're America's team as USA All Girl. Yes. They won America's last they won last April. Yes. I mean, shoot, they were so close to winning the you know, <sighs> year and a half prior. Yes, yes. When they had that disappointing finish. So I mean they've that team's been working hard for what, eighteen I, months, twenty months. For them straight, to, I think for so. them to be throwing full outs in like September, October was probably so incredibly helpful. As an outsider looking in, very proud of those girls because they're Mm. they're baddies. Like, they're good. They're really impressive. Just with our team, I mean, in the the year of 2021, Mm -hmm. our returners that did that kind of pushed back season and then did this season that we're in the middle of now... They did 190 full outs. It made them better. In one year. For sure. Like, that's For sure. two seasons combined, essentially, or one yeah. and a half, but... I should have been Team USA uh, gold medalist, too, but... Yeah. Just, I'm just still disappointed because those are those ladies are bad. Yeah, they're very talented. Very talented. Um, and some of that talent, 
was really shown with their innovation. So they yes. they brought those anodi halves, kind of a twist on the invert, literally, uh, you know, literally a twist on an inversion. I see um, what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think more importantly, that kind of touches on my three of our one three five seven of D one has really become kind of the innovation division. They really have between between University of West Georgia and Moorhead State University. Mm-hmm. I feel like both programs really enjoy pushing the envelope a little bit. Very and much. I and I mean those two programs stay head to head and it's it's paying off. Mm-hmm. I mean for them to they are they are pulling away from other programs by leaps and bounds with those risks, those innovations. I mean University of West Georgia, they're full program did the Anodi entries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, on the co-ed and the all-girl side. Yes, yeah. yes. So that was cool. <clears throat> um, yeah, and then Moorhead all-girl, they had the full twisting rewinds, Loved. which... Um, let's pause our talk about innovation to talk about the lack of innovation in the sport. Yeah. In that an all-girl basket cannot do a, a flip twist. with a twist. Mm-hmm. A flip with a twist, which is also known as a full. But... But you can do that same full. You can do a full twisting to rewind. people's hands at mm-hmm. the top. So um, we're keeping consistent, real, <laughs> grounded logic in cheerleading once again. Sarcasm aside, this is a real conversation that needs to happen because a full. But we've twi- been having this conversation. I know it's you crazy. I know you and I have been having this conversation. But if any of you are listening and, and you're in an important place and uh, <laughs> like these conversations need to happen because we're not doing anything for our sport by pulling away baskets, but saying you can do those exact same skills to two people's hands. Like if we think baskets are hands. dangerous, the baskets are dangerous, and we need. And to pull stop them. Doing them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because right now on the we score sheet, we did that sheet, with double fulls. You haven't yeah. seen anybody do a double full in college right. or school cheerleading. Because right now baskets time. are so lame. Yeah. They're so lame. But then you go over to um, like our our U.S. national team and you go through their what they're allowed to do in baskets. There's no way to train for that because there's no stepping skills mm-hmm. of baskets in college to baskets at the international level. Yep. That's a problem yep. that needs to be fixed. Mm-hmm. And that's a conversation that needs to be had people at the root of it is what you're, what you're saying is that's progressions. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of some of my other complaints with the sport and, you know, other flaws of the Which sport is what makes has. it safe, right? It's progression. How do we develop athletes? How do we get athletes from peewee cheer, tiny all-star, however we all start, you know, some people start middle school, high school, but however we all start, how does that translate to the highest level? Not everyone's going to make it there, yeah. but shouldn't we all be training to get there? Yeah, so. there's just a lack of those stepping stones, I mm-hmm. think. We'll touch on it later, but okay. I think some steps this past year were made to get us closer to those where mm-hmm. we have the sport aligned well back to d1 and their innovation um yeah west they're georgia, the innovation division for sure west georgia and their anodis their um bufus last year yep. program wide two years ago moorhead co-ed did the triple ups yeah and sickening. literally had a new rule made like why it was a rule made you can only spend twice yeah. If you can spend three times because and, more no, head. <laughs> and nobody got hurt, why does the rule need to be made? It's, yeah. it's just silly. But that just goes to show the innovation division, I think. For sure. The, the high level of skill that those two programs bring to those divisions allows for that mm-hmm. because it's a kind of a shoot for the moon type thing. Like if we can have all our groups do it, why shouldn't we do it? Because we can do that. But I think we saw it this year. The competition is getting tighter. Mm-hmm. You have... Eastern Kentucky, they were in there. They were only a few points behind. Yeah. Delaware, all girl, they've always kind of been in the mix. They're right there. Sacred Heart, they're a, they've been champions before. Yep. I'm just excited long term to see what this innovation division does because if right now we're seeing poofus and full twisting rewinds, like what's to come? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know even with uh, the flip flops last year, yes. that like fl- yes. every I know so many high school teams that were like we're having flip-flops this year like yep. flip-flops will be in our routine i bet because i know we tried them this it's a it's a very hard skill west georgia makes it look easy mm-hmm. uh we probably tried those skills for four months yeah. and we were like 
it's not, not happening. happening. Flipping forward instead of the traditional of like driving your mm-hmm. heels over and, and flipping backwards. So and, uh, Moorhead's um, pyramid, one of their candles, they went up in hand in hand mm-hmm. and then flipped it forwards. Yep. Also, incredible programs incredible innovation so now just still going on innovation i'll go into my five okay so five is ou all girl last year's routine was virtual so ou um's university didn't let them travel for nationals last year yep. co-ed and all girl won mm-hmm. last year well ou all girl had these like so hand like, in hand transitions yeah, where it's like hand hand, yeah. from the top they kicked up to their hand in hands. I'm mm-hmm. sure there's a name for it and I was too lazy to look it up. But I loved watching OU Co ed compete this year. Mm-hmm. Those yes. those inverts. Like normally Yeah, we were both on the couch like ah, ah, ah we remember that. Yeah. We remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so like it was really that was really fun. That was fun to watch because normally you see co ed do stuff like Diamondovs or um, mm-hmm. Anodis or you know what what have you, and then you see all girl teams figure out how they can do that with four people. And we've seen that a lot, like um, coming from like the staff side, yeah, with, like the demo and stuff, or seeing that on the college demo side mm-hmm. is like, okay, we're gonna be doing backhand spring full ups. Okay, does the all girl groups have that? Do mm-hmm. they not have that? Are they gonna just do backhand spring ups? And obviously, I'm speaking a decade ago when yeah. those were new skills, but um, I think. Yeah, we rarely ever see all girl innovate towards co ed, or right. if, it, if it is, it's very rare. Right. I think one exception is definitely West Georgia, yes. where they try to innovate program wide at the same time. I love that. Which is so cool. But the, I love that. As we've talked about on the podcast before, it's it's their great coaching minds that yeah. the the it starts with Brian and Nicole but yep. then it they've brought in great coaches and mm-hmm. they're able to just be all on the same page yeah. and i think that that's key totally for it. back to the point of 5 shout out OU all girl Very cool. innovating for OU code cuz OU code's routine was awesome incredible performance and then knowing just that little tidbit about it made it a little you know a little more cooler for us yeah. um, to watch yeah Sticking in the D1A division, talking for our seven, gotta give some love to the Bulls back to back. D1A national champions for co ed. That's very hard to do, especially if you're not wearing blue and there's not a K on your chest. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's ever happened for another team in the history of D1A co ed. I'll another, have to fact check that. I'm gonna have to fact check that, but for another program to go back to back because that's hard I know UCF did I think it was like 05 and 07 mm. for there so there was a year in between mm-hmm. I don't think Alabama had two in mm-hmm. there um, Memphis didn't have two in there they just had their one before they went back down to small co-ed y'all can yell at us in all the comments and things but we got a, a lot of slander for not picking USF as one of our top choices for co-ed because they did win last year. Mm. But I I remember sitting down, we were doing our picks and I was like, ooh, I want to pick USF. I don't think that they're not capable, but I do know that that is so hard. That is such a hard division. So yeah. USF, <clears throat> I formally apologize to the co-ed team for like, it's not that I didn't believe in you. I, uh, just bravo because that was yeah. that was very hard to do. Y'all did the dang thing, so yeah. congrats! It's it a awesome. great performance. That I mean, just Sunday night at Wide World of Sports is just a very intense evening. So mm-hmm. it it definitely brings the nerves out, the pressure of performing, performing well, yeah. hitting, hitting all together can definitely you know rise to the top. So. Uh, props to them for keeping it together, holding it strong. Ronnie and Jill, congrats to you guys back to back. Love to see a married couple um, coaching together, winning stuff. Parents of two also. Like, oh my gosh, yeah! Like, still had her other baby this past year, so yeah. But I guess, yeah, keeping with that, thank you to everyone who posted their picks. Who we made had so picks. many people participate. Mm, this is yeah, fun. Yeah, it was great participation on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. And I think each time we've done it, more and more events, we've gotten more participation i think even people that don't share their own picks love seeing what we pick and criticizing us which that's why we put it out there because it um it adds to the conversation but i don't um, think I'm with that. I, yeah, I guess you might not agree with that but the i guess one cool thing i wanted to kind of say that i noticed about putting our picks out is that 
I guess, continually putting picks out for events is that like cheerleading fans are so excited to be able to be involved mm-hmm. as a fan mm-hmm. just a little bit more than watching on like a paid stream or something. Yeah. Like having the ability for it to be engaging just the half percent that we add, the amount of responses and people that reach out where normally they don't yeah. about this event. Yeah. Um, I think it's tweeted, so cool to me. I think I tweeted about that this weekend because when it comes to not just college nationals, but any cheerleading event, I can go months without talking to certain people mm-hmm. and a cheerleading event, a, a cheerleading event happens and I will talk to those people for three days straight and then we won't talk again for nine months and it's like the best conversation ever Mm -hmm. so i kind of i just love the relationships that's like it's brought into our lives and the friendships we have because of it and then to also just have people like message us or text us yesterday rob texted us he was like it's playing somebody's game day what do i do and i was like Dang, I haven't talked to Robin forever. Hey, Rob, I think it's on. I think it's on a rebroadcast right now. Yeah. So jump, jump to the other stream. And he was like, okay. And then we talked all night about yeah. the results and the performances. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's just like cheerleading is is just so great. And this is like one of the reasons I missed it so much. And I didn't know that this was one of the reasons of why. Mm-hmm. Like, I just knew during the pandemic, I just missed it. And there was like a gaping hole in our hearts of like th- something is missing. And we knew it was cheerleading, but there's just so many other things. Yeah. that come with it like things like that so mm-hmm. yeah but yeah so our picks our final results i ended up with three correct oh. lauren only one unfortunately hey go west georgia <laughs> um yes west georgia held strong for you <laughs> i think um a few people that had sent theirs in i think there were a few that got four or five right so okay. that was great nothing uh like courtney's stellar performance last year where she went like eight for nine um we're gonna so. refer to her 2021 like perfect picks for years on out probably until, until somebody goes perfect yeah it's definitely the bar yeah i think that you know it's not necessarily a surprise like Mm -hmm. oh we were wrong like who cares i think more so it just shows like the landscape of cheerleading especially college cheerleading can change Mm -hmm. rapidly where you can see teams kind of have rises to the top and then they come back down at a you know a standard level they don't come crashing down but you know they they do have kind of a meteoric rise towards the top and you see new names come into the mix and Mm -hmm. old names kind of fall out as coaches change people change their lives and things so I, i think it's just it's always so cool to see what people pick what you know how the picks result but then I, I do love the feedback that we get. Like you were talking about the slander. I we, always get roasted. We got we got some slack for some of our picks, but I think my biggest and only response is y'all gotta post videos. Like I'm chronically online. Like chronically. <laughs> but like in all of that chronically online, like I'm not seeing Cheer- some of yeah. the top cheerleading teams post stuff. And I get it. We want to all hold our innovation. We want to hold our new developments, our more difficult skills close to the chest. We want to keep things in our pocket. Okay, but like baskets. But yeah, your whole routine is not innovation. Your tumbling no. section. You can only do so much in your baskets. There's typically Let's only... see it. Yeah, Let's there's, see there's it. only so much you can do in like... Your game day. Like, let me see your game day stunts. Let me see how y'all are looking on the sidelines. Like, Mm -hmm. I understand that coaches can't always have their phones out and be videoing things. We are a fortunate dynamic where, like, you are chronically online, so you chronically have your phone in your hand. And we have cheer parents that, like, are always holding our babies. So I feel like a lot of times I'm running around yelling, 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 and you are getting able to get some Mm. good clips. But But if you have more than... Two coaches. Yes. Somebody should have their phone at all times. Mm-hmm. And with that specifically in mind, why am I so good at doing all this? Because I started as a college athlete mm. posting on our Facebook and Twitter back in the day when there was only Facebook and Twitter yeah. pictures and text to post. So I think 
some coaches programs need to work with the young people on their teams to say who's good at this yeah who knows how to do it set up a simple system so that not everything can just go public from yeah. your accounts that have 15 20 thousand followers i get it you don't want to just hand the keys out to the kingdom yeah. and allow something okay. to get blooped okay I understand that you don't want to you don't want to give away your playbook. Jumping, you know, back into the mix of the event, the you know, just the the chaos of the weekend. I think one conversation point that you know reached a, a large head last night was Kentucky finishing in eighth yeah. um, in D one A. Yeah. So coming out of prelims, Kentucky had a great performance. They only had point five in deduction, so they only needed to just hit harder. Like, they hit, mm-hmm. there was a little bit of hesitation, I think, throughout the routine performance-wise, but, like, solid performance, nothing they should have been upset about. And, like, walking off that floor as an athlete, I think I very much would have been like, we just got to do that same thing with some confidence tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I'm sure that's what they did. I am, um, yeah, I'm positive that's what they did. I don't, I, I'm not quite sure what happened. Uh, yeah, um, I, I mean, you, you, Drop a pyramid, you drop in the cheer. I mean, if you drop in the cheer in any routine, you're you, done. You're kind of it's it's toast for you. It's going to be tough to come back. But yeah, the this, that was tough. Like watching that, it was like a walk hands, and it a walk lo- extension. Yeah. A walk extension. It looked like that guy. Um, did the pyramid fall right before that? Mm-hmm. He looked. He looked gassed from whatever had just happened. Yeah, I don't happened. know if he was in that or not, if he came from that section. I'm almost I'm almost positive he did. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But it looked like he was kind of gassed from that. It was tough. It looked like it hadn't happened before because it looked like they had a very confusing time on how do we recover from this. Like, Definitely was. That's kind of like what I took away from watching that. It was like, okay, I don't think that's ever happened to them because they both look like what do we jump back into? It's like the girl mm-hmm. wanted to jump back into the hands press lib and he wanted to jump into the shoulder stand and it was it was chaotic. Mm-hmm. It was it was a little it was a little crazy to watch. Like we were saying the the Twitter chatter was quite a buzz after um It was loud. And I mean, rightfully so, the the program for them has been cheerleading s- brightest star in terms of For a long time yeah. headlines like years ago they were making appearances as national champions they've they've been an incredible program i think nearly every college program especially on the uca side has looked up to them tried to emulate model themselves after them at some point and in some way and so i think after seeing them kind of go through the I guess scandal you to call it um, that they went through in 2020, and then and then now a culture change. Yeah, so they're yeah, they're tough. experiencing coaching change, culture change. Mm-hmm. I mean, even their day to day changed because they went from being a student group to now being, um, you know, a tool of the athletic department. Like a lot of cheer programs are at the college level they're more athletic department centric I, but i do think for the most part like i think people do want to see kentucky they still do be great cheerleading. successful so there's just tough weekend for them i mean i don't mm. i don't think that finals performance defined who that team was no. it's just disappointing i think for cheerleading in general because that is one of the the top dogs mm. that i think all of us are like that's Kentucky cheerleading, and we didn't get that out of finals. That, and I think where when, you know, you talk to people who don't know cheerleading as well. Sure. And they're like, and you're like, oh, what'd you do this weekend? And you're like, oh, I watched college nationals. You know, it was great. And people, people typically are like, how did Kentucky do? Yeah. Because normal people, non-cheer people know that Kentucky's great at cheerleading. Yep. And so I think that that's where I even was so different because then, because a few people tweeted as, what did Kentucky get? And we, I just shared the results mm-hmm. with them. And they were like, oh, dang. And it's yeah. like, yeah, that, that's not expected. Well, I think a lot of people also thought, was there a legality issue? Like, how mm-hmm. did not to listen that's a very tough division so it's not like we need to like turn our nose noses up at eighth place that was just shocking for kentucky that's not the standard that kentucky normally holds themselves to so mm-hmm. there was an illegality there was 
those were just deductions. Yeah. So that's it's just rough. That's tough. That's tough. Definitely, it's tough. I think something that was interesting in that division, as well as we had, you know, UCF came out of semis uh, or semis prelims, whatever we call it, on top. Yeah. And they had a, an awesome routine. And I think with them is where I noticed it. I don't know how I missed it previously, but that the that the divisions are now twenty for co ed. Yeah. From sixteen. So I was trying to think about that earlier. I was like, was that from the pandemic? Was that after? I don't know. It really doesn't matter. But I think I noticed it specifically with the routines this year. You saw six elites, you saw eight, nine IMEs. Yep. You saw a lot more tumbling, a lot more dynamic movement across the floor. Mm-hmm. And so I, I noticed that with UCF, they had just awesome difficulty as yeah. a bummer. Unfortunately for them, for their finals performance, they weren't able to hit. Yeah. So yeah, they came, in. UCF came out of prelims sitting in first mm-hmm. and with Kentucky right on their right on their tail. And so, so yeah, so they ended up fifth for UCF and eighth for Kentucky. So both had bad drops. It just goes to show you have to hit. And while we're talking about it, I mean, OU, they had, when you look at their raw score, <sighs> incredible. I think they believe, I believe they got, they would have gotten second. That's if everybody had hit. If but... everybody had hit. Yeah. If we're going off raws, but they had one of their guys lost his balance and fell on his butt. So I think everybody in the room at our house, I think jaws dropped at that point. We were all like, oh my oh gosh, no. OU is hitting. They're hitting hard. Boomer Sooners. Oh, a catcher just fell on his butt. Okay, oh, Top wait. Girl didn't skip a beat and they finished strong. And I'm like, that's a deduction, isn't it? Yep. So unfortunately, that kind of cost them at least cost them second according to Roz according to Roz but like we can do if this if that if right. this if that but like in my mind it kind of lost things. what if it kind of lost them a national championship it potentially could have potentially and but, we've talked about it before in this podcast I've tweeted about it before you can't miss your bunnies and you can't fall on your butt when you catch something and I that think was, that, was a pyram- that was, that was a pyramid dismount though that, yeah. that's a bunny you, you can't be the guy that's supposed to catch your girl and you fall on your butt. That's I just an, feel so bad for him. Oh, I feel so bad for the whole yeah. team. For him, especially the whole team. Yeah. yeah that's tough. <sighs> Bummer. Uh, but yeah, got to stay on your feet. That might have been my low for the week <laughs> for that division. Because I was like, no, that was such a good routine. They did mm-hmm. so well. And then for that to happen, just like, oh, my stomach hurts. Yeah, that's yeah. tough. But on the topic of OU, like you just mentioned, they started with their cheer. I think Mm -hmm. that and then the expansion from 16 to 20, because now both all girl and co-ed can have 20 out there. Yeah. It's very much seems like the sport is trying to align. Um, Love it. Love to see it. Like we talked about at the beginning of this episode of your cheerleading career should prepare you for the next level as you go through the ranks yep. and i i personally loved seeing that i don't think we counted but i know for a fact if this we went back year's and, and check tweets like finals tweets most started with yeah cheer. i would say i don't think we've counted but i would say out of all the years of uca nationals this was the year where there were the most routines that started with the cheer which that's what icu does uh, that's what nca does in part because they only do that for their prelims and then they do a, a 215 routine so i think the stars are finally aligning i don't know if it's this podcast i don't know if it's the olympic push i don't know if it's collectively the sport is finally growing where it's at the point where people are expecting those the that kind of progression to line up i mean we've known stunt progression and tumbling progression is the thing that you do so it's doesn't it has never made sense for us to not do that top to bottom for the sport 100 percent, i um, couldn't agree more so will we see more continue was this a one-year trend with the cheer at the beginning we'll have to see i think it'll continue and i think think it should continue and it only made sense to me especially to see west georgia in like the d1 division starting with the cheer because they just did the the u.s national team stuff back in the fall so they're like oh well we just did the cheer and then did the next half of 
and just did mm-hmm. all of the music. Why don't we just keep following that if that's what we're training for? Right. Like, what's the ne- what's the next thing we're training for? Start training these kids for it. So mm-hmm. I think we're actually going to see it start dropping down to the high school level. Probably not this year, but I think after college nationals, we're going to see a lot more next year. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So that'll be a, a cool change. And I mean, you and I just want uniformity throughout our sport so we're right. we're like rooting for that exactly not related to necessarily the icu side but i think you know uca development side college nationals development side this has been the second year now where we've seen scores get posted both yes. raw deductions and the final score so i think that is a step in the right direction from uca more transparency please mm-hmm. as we just People want to be involved. Bravo. It's it's not that we, I mean, shoot, we're here talking about the event for an hour. Not once do we want to talk about the scores Mm-mm. in a way where we think they were wrong because yeah. we don't care. No. But we want to see the scores because that's interesting for how the finish is aligned. If you're smart, you're in the sport, you've been doing this on the coaching side, the athlete side, whatever side, for a long time, you know this is subjective. So and you're not always going to agree with what you see. The transparency. We love to see it. We love to see it. Something else I love to see the return of this year, partner stunt. Yay! So think, ah, yes, yes, yes. I think last year with the virtual, you know, part virtual, part in person, mm-hmm. the the lack of facility and crowds, I'm sure Disney and, you know, the opinions of the CDC matter for the capacity that they have. So I'm sure there were a lot of factors for why we didn't get partner stunt, but mm-hmm. we got partner stunt this year. Yes. Some exciting, exciting performances on both the all girl and the code side. I think something of note, interesting wise is that the top tape submission on the co-ed side on the co-ed side that top entry was uh colin and molly they dropped out of the competition like a week or so ago before the from event. weber state yeah they're from weber state and then a weber couple a different weber couple yes one en- ended up winning and i think another weber couple got third yeah or no sorry they tied for second Oh, wonderful. Um, so they went one, and then a Moorhead and a Weber got second. There's something in that water in Utah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think just, you know, on one hand, uh, you know, bummer, especially we saw Molly's post. I really wanted to see Molly. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw glimpses of her in Cheer on Netflix. Yes. For those of you who don't know who we're talking about, Molly, she's a brilliant stunter, brilliant tumbler. She went to T- Trinity Valley. Now she's at Weber. And their partner stunt tape was incredible. She's a hell of an athlete. I love watching her videos on Instagram. So her and Colin have been, you know, stunting through this first semester. And then you can go to Colin's Instagram. And he has this, um, you know, kind of lengthy post of why he didn't compete. And Mm, so if... Why he pulled out of the comp. Yeah. Yes. So, of course, I'm sure a lot of people are disappointed in that. But I'm... I saw Molly still went and still supported her Mm -hmm. teammates, which is phenomenal. But watching just little glimpses of her on Cheer on Netflix season two and then kind of following her a little bit at Weber State. Dang it. I I really wanted to see her her compete because she just looks like the type of girl that is not a pageant queen, is not your typical cheerleader. She's just an athlete. And so she... uh, I'm very intrigued by her. I don't know. I wanted I wanted to see her compete so bad. Mm-hmm. So I was I was equally as bummed um, yeah. to not see them go. And I because they if if they had hit it was probably going to be a pretty sick routine. Mm-hmm. And I think she even posted. I think it's on her Instagram of what the routine was going to be. Yeah. So if you want to um, go check that and out. Then- when then seeing the others from Cheer on Netflix, uh, Jada coming with Sam Houston. Oh, yeah. Then, that was awesome. Um, there was the Trinity Valley groups. Mm-hmm. And then there was the Navarro group. Um, this was all on the co-ed side. So that was just cool because we literally watched yeah, the, Jillian was there the episodes. With- and then we turned and we opened up our social media feed and we were like, oh, there's Navarro and yeah. there's Trinity Valley. Like, like that was all Friday night Vontae for us too. and Franklin being mm-hmm. there and we're literally just finished the, the new season. So um, that was cool to see. Kind I was of just sad we collide. didn't see one of the weenies competing at um, <laughs> partners. Those tumble boys don't want to stunt. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get that on another, on another yeah, podcast. Yeah, those tumble boys don't want to stunt at all. 
on the all girl side, yes. Moorhead, you know, back to innovation division. Those yes. those girls can stunt with those full twisting rewinds mm-hmm. and those you know one and a quarter full around air best. The in the routine looked awesome. So those they are finished so pretty. They finished first and second. Two different groups. Uh, I mean, just looking at these scores, the winning group had a ninety eight point three. Like, ooh, yeah, you know yeah. that was clean. You they were they clean. are insane. Like. You know, I know we talk about West Georgia a lot, but Moorhead All Girl Two is just so insane. They are Wait, so and I was talented. Say, while we're talking about Moorhead being great, can we talk about how well Kentucky as a state did? Oh, I know. At college nationals, you had Moorhead win coed. You have Eastern Kentucky get third in the coed side. You have Kentucky as a traditional powerhouse. They got eighth. They weren't bad. They had a lot of difficulty. <clears throat> oh, they were it so didn't good hit. still. Who else we got in the Western mix? Kentucky? Western Kentucky won small co-ed, got second in all girl after winning last year. I that hope they didn't down. hang their heads either because, like, after watching them, I was like, mm-hmm. I thought they won. I thought they won. You and I were sitting on the couch going, it's between Bama and Western Kentucky. Yeah. We okay, wait, we're getting sidetracked. We got to go back to all girl um, partner side. Yes. Well, just Kentucky. That's what okay. we're talking about. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just okay. all of those Kentucky schools just performed great. They yes. just show up. Yes. Kentucky but is, is great. Moorhead was one and two for all girl. And who was three? Texas State. Whose coach is from Moorhead. <laughs> yes. So, like, that was, like, a really cool, like, Again, watching from the outside, looking in. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure that was like a really cool, like full circle moment for the head coach at Texas State University, Jocelyn. So Mm -hmm. I just thought that was cool watching from afar, like Moorhead one, Moorhead two, Texas State led by a Moorhead alum. Exactly. Very cool. Exactly. Very cool. They're doing big things at Texas State. I hope we get some kids there. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Otherwise, I think the you know this was just a great event for cheerleading i wanted to talk a little bit about all girl d1a okay so we had gotten so we posted our picks right we posted our Mm -hmm. picks we said this is who we want this is who we think blah 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 we started getting a bunch of like rumors and it was like hey alabama all girls not going somebody was like alabama is sending both their teams to nca yes and i was like wait what and then we were getting other messages that were like alabama all girl had a COVID outbreak or alabama all girl is not is not going this weekend but we kept checking the schedule update it never came they never never came mm, off the schedule so even, we, I mean, we, the messages just kept coming. We weren't even yes, posting anything. from multiple sources. So many people being Bama's like, not Alabama's to, not going. Yeah, Bama's not going to NCA. And I was like, somebody just told me they were. And yeah. I was like, okay, are they? Are they coming to UCA? Are, are they too tired from the bowl games? Right. Are they... Do they have COVID? Is it COVID quarantines? Do they actually have COVID? It was it was all over the place. You're so right. So something that I felt like was very... Something everybody can kind of maybe use as motivation going into high school nationals is I want to find the tweet one second. I was tweeted at by the former coach of Alabama. Okay. I had just tweeted earlier on like, oh my gosh, there's so many things that are happening online today. How are we supposed to get it all together in a podcast with us being without us being super ADD. So Brian, how do you say, uh, Groeschel, mm-hmm. he had tweeted, if I'm counting correctly, I think Alabama all girl and co-ed only had full team practices for five or six of the 17 days prior to Sunday. So finals <sighs> because of COVID and the two bowl trips. Yeah. That time frame also included a span of seven days where they were shut down completely completely and unable to practice at all due to covid so so 10 of those days they could practice and in those 10 days they really only had the full team there for five or six of those days unreal and i'm i'm i was so impressed when we saw alabama all girl come out and they did compete in finals we Mm -hmm. were like wow they did the dang thing and really like you were saying earlier, we watched them and we watched Western Kentucky and we were like, is Western Kentucky going to go back to back? Yeah, because they we did, thought there were going to be two back to back. They did yeah. really well. And those girls should hold their heads high because they did so, so, so well this weekend. I know second place is mm. probably not what they wanted, but like 
incredible incredible performance right. incredible routine Allie they, they Lumpkin lost, yeah, say they lost by point four. And is the head like, coach oh. and a former Kentucky cheerleader mm-hmm. so she's doing great things there it's really fun to watch Western Kentucky really hit their stride and they're doing well we're gonna see good things from them in the future not that oh, we yeah. already haven't but we're Allie's been stay up there Allie's been there for two years I can only imagine how far they're mm-hmm. gonna go so that honestly was kind of the Cinderella story of the weekend for Alabama because mm-hmm. we had been told they're gonna pull they're not gonna be there why are they in your predictions like blah 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 blah. and they ended up showing up and showing out and winning yeah because then like on thursday we so those those messages switched to bama's going they're just gonna make do and hope for the best they're just gonna make Make do do Uh, we're gonna make do with winning and getting second just make do isn't that crazy they were just going thinking you know what we just we're just gonna do what we can and they won like how satisfying like and bowl games i don't know i'm just so happy for them i feel like that really is a true highlight story from the weekend i think that so, was yeah, we did. so special we went to a, one of the big bowl games was this the orange bowl year. yeah we went to the orange bowl my junior year so that was in miami it was like the week after New Year, so it's that first week of January, and be at those big bowl games. And obviously, we weren't at the national championship like Alabama is all the time, but, right? So they're a little used to it. I guess that's in their favor. But those big bowl games, you, they send the whole program, yeah, like a week early because there's a pep rally or an event. Two, yes. th- two, three times a day. So those kids, I mean, they might be together. They might be doing some stunting, but they're not doing elite sequences. They're doing toss hands to a fight song and taking pictures with Alabama grandmas who yes. made the trip to the bowl game. It's exhausting. I mean, yeah. it's totally exhausting. You're on your feet. You're doing a million <clears throat> appearances, events, mm-hmm. all of that, like, leading up to the game. I and remember I mean, doing and that. I, it was I mean, exhausting. Our coach was like, all right, we rented, we reserved the ballroom, and we're going to go work on our routine and we're all just like oh my god we can't get out of these beds so, yeah it's tough um, props to them big yeah big january for alabama cheer and I i'm think very it, happy for their all girl i think that's a very cool story to definitely. think to think and, and and it sounds like from within they felt down and out and and they still did it so that was mm-hmm. that was cool that was yeah. really that was the last thing i had to throw in there because i just know Everybody getting ready for NHSCC. I'm seeing posts weekly that are like, you know, we haven't had a full team practice this year yet. Mm -hmm. COVID is pulling back a lot of people. I think through 2020 and us all being so sad that we like a lot of teams didn't get to compete in NCAA wise and stuff. It's almost worse that we are now competing and we're still fighting COVID and we're still having to quarantine, to keep families safe, to do these protocols and things. It's harder. It's harder. And it's just more hoops to jump through. Because typically our who's at practice is okay trainer we're all good somebody's got a you know bruised ankle you know somebody's coming off of concussion protocol that's at the most yeah and you know you find out all that info in two seconds from a text or an email or a phone call from your trainer or your ad but it's like with these protocols you're like you have to wait for the safety office the medical staff the the five-day quarantine and then a mask mandate and then this and then Uh that and then you have like you have to get tested again and and then you have a return to play protocol with the athletic trainers and it's a lot so for all of you more hoops so all of you coaches that are just like going through it right now bigger picture these kids are going to appreciate you for it and just like Congrats for holding the team together and just keep holding them together because you're almost there. Yeah. You're almost there. Yeah. So I think this, you know, was a great start to our kind of 2022 season for our shows as we, you know, have this event and then we've been, you know, going through Cheer on Netflix. That's going to be episode 18 Mm -hmm. here in a week or so. And then we're, you know, diving into NHSCC ourselves and then we have NCAA All-Star following that and Cheer Sport 
and then we work our way up to Daytona in April and then ICU Worlds at the end of April. So got a good season ahead of us. And we're yeah. excited. Yeah. So. Congrats to all the winners this weekend. I know all of the teams, like everybody worked so hard. Again, the hoops everybody had to jump through to make this weekend happen. And it was a great event. It was a fun event. I just cannot wait for more cheerleading. I'm just so happy. At and I'm, I'm for once since I think I was like either 13 or maybe 20, I'm excited to go to Disney World because yeah. we had the time off. So it's going to be a good trip for us. Safe travels to everybody going down for yeah. NHSCC. Yeah. And music's off. <laughs> music's off. Yep. Done. You ready for this? Who live is this? Who live is this? Who live is this? We too legit. We are M-A-R-K-Z-A-R-U. Mark through podcast. Listen and learn. Watch and observe. Challenging us. They got some nerve. We great. You mad. Don't hate. Get to it. Don't wait. We do not hesitate. We do what it takes. What we do. Mark through. Morehead Coed did smack. <laughs> like, they smacked that routine.